Today is January 24th, 2019, and this is episode 23 of Plane Savers. Oh man, this would be one of those mornings that's uh, it's cold out and pretty much everything went wrong this morning, so hope you like today's episode. <laughs> so let's uh, make it better. It's minus 32 degrees Celsius, which is minus 28 degrees Fahrenheit. I want to say good morning to everybody in the UK, good afternoon to everybody in North America and South America. Uh, good mid-morning, I guess, to Australia and specifically to the Germans too. Hello, Germany. I'm probably forgetting, well, I'm forgetting a lot of countries, but it's important to say hi to everybody. I want to start off this episode really quickly uh, that uh, I got a package uh, a couple days ago, so let's flash back uh, to that. All right, we just got a package in. I want you to open it here. Here, we can do an unboxing. Here's the scissors. Unboxing. Yeah, it's all the YouTube trend right now. Holy smokes, look at that. Looks like it was 3D milled out or something. Yeah, it's 3D printed Plane Savers uh, logo. Jeez, it just looks like you wrote it, only now it's uh, milled out. What do you call it? 3D printing? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to learn a little bit more about it. The, the guys that sent it over are going to give us a little video. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's head over to Montreal where the head base of Stratus Aviation is located. These guys made this thing for me, which I can't thank them enough. They're also making uh, some extra items that uh, are going to be available for the Plane Savers community. And uh, that's enough of me talking. Let's go figure out how they made this thing. Hello and welcome to Stratus Aviation. So we have a lot of cool machines here to do all kinds of devices. Up to our beautiful Fusion 3 printer. Uh, currently we're producing keychains for uh, a company that we love and that we appreciate all the hard work that they do uh, to preserve aviation in Canada. It's a very big uh, printing bed. We're printing on 14 inches across by 16 in uh, inches deep. So it's, it's a pretty impressive machine and we could print uh, pretty much any type of material, polycarbonate, ABS, PLA, and also carbon fiber and Kevlar. Since we started the Stratus Aerospace Lab, we've been actually quite busy working on quite a few little and big projects. So again, thank you very much for following us. Uh, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and more importantly, see you in the air. Have a good day. So I want to take a quick second to thank Stratus Aviation for printing out this amazing Plane Savers 3D printed uh, sign. And I got a special place for it. Uh, it's going to go right here. It's going to be, there we go, the sign for Plane Saver Studio, which again is just my desk, but we're working on it. Another huge thank, to, thank you to everybody who purchased the hat on the last episode. There is a couple left and uh, everybody who purchased items on my Amazon wish list, I blown away, thank you so much. Um, I got pretty much everything I need now for the next couple months and uh, now it's just up to me to make videos for you guys every day, I'm gonna try. If I get sick, I might have to make a video from my bed, but I'm here for you guys. Uh, we've built such a cool community, I can't wait uh, to share every single step with you. I know some people are messaging me going, uh, what about the airplane and all that stuff and, and honestly it is plane savers is about the people as much as it is about airplanes and uh, not every day you know something is happening directly towards a DA machine but every day stuff happens for the people that are going to be plane saving so yeah hopefully you can stick with us hopefully uh, we can find more people thank you for sharing the videos thank you thank you thank you I can't thank you enough I'll, I'll have to do a whole video just 10 minutes of me saying thank you uh, it still wouldn't be enough so 
again let's get back to her and uh, see if we can go find Chuck okay so here's the most requested thing ever so Chucky where are we going we're going to knock it okay now what do you want to know Mike okay what do we have in here this is the uh, L188 Electra cockpit <laughs> okay remember you were looking at it yesterday yeah maybe tomorrow yeah come on come get me tomorrow and I'll take you up in the cockpit and I'll explain the differences between the Herc and the L188 because they're both Lockheed products right mm -hmm. which is the better one yeah let's... well they're both kind of equal yeah they yeah. both serve their purposes very well mm -hmm. but we'll talk about that and then you got the Hercules right so these are the big two big airplanes well not the biggest but generation I would say of freighters passenger this started as passenger right so the differences are quite a bit if you know what I mean like this is rated at 3750 horsepower where I'm pretty sure the Herc's 4000 turbine inlet temperature right yeah well it's how hot how much temperature you can get out of your turbine to get the horsepower because the Herc engines run at a hot, hotter temperature where these ones run under a thousand like 971 and shit like that where the Herc engines are over a thousand for takeoff power and stuff like that now this is the horsepower gear this is the TIT turbine inlet temperature this is the horsepower gear okay now the Herc they go in torque not horsepower now you know how that horsepower is red Oh. Ow. From the shaft that goes from the reduction gearbox to the engine has a twisting momentum, which two magnets will pick up the twisting, and it's all calculated into Einstein's head, right? How it all kind of works, and it gives you a number, <laughs> right? Yeah. Which you're maxed out, like you don't want to be going, they say 4,000 horsepower, well, you can get that in the wintertime. You don't want to be going over that because you're tearing the gearbox apart. The Herc is in torque. RPM. RPM. Revolutions per minute. The Electra runs and the Herc 13,820. Right? Mm -hmm. My bike red lines at 14,000. Get that. <laughs> the Herc is in percentage. They don't have RPM same thing same purpose it's measured through that torch torque meter shaft okay that's one thing that's different with the Herc compared to the Electra so the advantage of the Electra is you can deteriorate the engine down lower than you would the Herc but there's a lot of differences in these two airplanes what about the difference a lot of differences is a lot better with this airplane in the long run too bad it didn't have like a swing tail or something you know what I mean it'd make a big difference but there's a lot of advantages with the Electra compared to the Herc that being said, there is a lot of cargo Hercules flying over the around the world, and, and oh yeah, and only two cargo Electras, and we're That's right. we're sitting in fifty percent of them. Well, they never built many to begin with. Yeah, like one hundred twenty-seven or something. That's right. That's not really a lot, and you can also start the Electra at forty below with no preheat. The Herc, you try that, your, your propeller is going to have grease squirting all over the place and blow every O-ring that's in the propeller. That's a Hamilton standard. Do you want to go uh, look at the props? Why would I want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, buddy. There's a little, little tour of the old Electra. So, Chucky, you want to head down? Uh, we look at the props. A lot of people are asking about the props, about the, the shape of them. Uh, let's go down there, and you can explain to us uh, one of the, probably the most rarest part of the airplane. Oh, definitely. Oh, yes. Okay, Chucky, so one thing yeah. that people are always asking about the Electra is the props. Because okay. you don't really see props that look like this. No, definitely not. Now, remember what I told you, how the engine turns over at 13820, right? Yeah. So what is the propeller turning over at? I don't know, what do you think? It's 1010. You get this, this, this is like in the late 50s, they when they designed it. Oh, probably more, more, more efficient, I would say. Well, I'm really 100% sure, but it's hollow. Now, if this was not hollow, that 
that'd be one heavy prop, wouldn't it? I mean, size. That's why it's all. Okay, I'll see you later, buddy. Okay, see you. Okay, yeah, Thank see you, you later, Mike. Don't bother me anymore until next week, right? Okay, you got a deal. Yeah, you got it. So I just finished editing the episode. I'm just about to upload it now for YouTube for you guys. This is as live as you can get it. So I just want to say hi again. And uh, tomorrow's episode, we're going to go visit another DC-3. A DC-3 I haven't shown yet. Uh, it's another team building it for D-Day, a different one. So uh, I'm excited to show you guys that. And, uh, yeah, we're going to see you tomorrow. And we're going to see you the next day. We're going to see you the next day after that. And all the way to June 6th. And uh, I can't wait. Thank you for spending uh, your evening, morning, or day with me. I'll be seeing you very soon.